Here are five smart investing habits to start in 2022. It's a perfect time to create smart investing habits that will benefit you not only for the, this year, next year, but possibly for the rest of your life. Here are five smart investing habits to start. Stay tuned and subscribe. Number one is having a plan. One of the most important specifics of investing is setting specific financial goals and then putting a plan in the place to reach those goals. In fact, if you sign up for a robo-advisor or meet with a financial planner, the first things you will be asked to do is answer question about your goals. One of the reasons why having specific investment goals is that it makes it possible to reverse engineer them to ensure you reach them. Take retirement, for example, when you have set a goal of what age you want to retire and how much you want available to spend each year in retirement. You can figure out the dollar amount you will need to retire comfortably with, as well as how much you will need to invest per month to reach that ultimate goal. The same concept can be used to figure out how much you should save monthly for any financial goal. When it comes to investing, start with the end in mind, knowing your short and long-term financial goals. It can help you create the stick to a financial plan and help you build a diversified portfolio that's appropriate for your specific goals. Mental accounting, a concept made famous by economist Richard Teller, is the idea that people tend to mentally separate their money into different baskets. We think of the money in our checking account for spending, the money in our savings account for saving and so on. When we buy coffee in the morning, we don't take money out of our IRA. To do that, we use our debt or credit card. That's how we think about money. And so, we can use mental accounting to help us save for financial goals. We can take advantage of this idea of mental accounting to reach our financial goals. When you're saving for a particular goal and you leave the money setting in your checking account, it's easy to spend on something else. But what if that money is in entirely different accounts? You can still easily access the money, meaning there's nothing that inherently preventing you from spending it, but simply by putting it into an account designed for that financial goal, you will use mental accounting to make it less likely that you'll spend it. If you're struggling to transfer money to your savings or investment account, in the first place, consider automating your finances. For example, you can set up an automatic transfer from your checking account to your savings account on the first of each month to help you build your emergency fund or from your checking account to an individual retirement account IRA to help you save for retirement. By automating your finances, you increase the chances you will follow through on your goals. You aren't relying on your willpower or motivation to save each month. Instead, technology care of it for you. And after a while, you probably will not miss them. Extra money in your checking account anymore, saving a higher percentage of income. There's no hard and fast rule for what percentage of your income you should invest. Remember that the percentage you should save depends on your annual income. 
your age today and age you plan to retire at and your desired annual income during retirement. For example, someone purchasing fire or financial independence retire earlier will need to save a much larger percentage of their income now than someone who plans to retire at 65. When asked when percentage of income he recommends, that investors save every month. This 20% can include money going into your retirement accounts as well as money going into cash, reserves and taxable brokerage account to save for short term and long term goals when decided how much of your saving should go into retirement accounts. For your retirement goals, make sure you are at, at least taking full advantage of your employer's matching. If offered, this is essentially free money. Not sure how to achieve this 20% saving rate? The popular 50, 30, 20 budgeting method breaks down what percentage of your income should be going toward wants, need and financial goals. It can help you identify areas in your budget where you're overspending so you can allocate more money towards savings. Diversify your investments. If you're at all familiar with investing, then you have probably heard the advice to diversify your investments. But what does that actually means? Diversification is when you have spent your money across many different investments. For example, rather than only investing in stocks, you also have money in bonds, cash and probably alternative assets. And investing, invested of any investing in stock from a single company or sector, you have invested in many companies across a variety of sectors. The goal is to prevent any single holding from making or breaking your financial success as concentrated position from volatility. When diversifying your portfolio, specialist recommends including both domestic and international holding, like many financial experts. I recommend that exchange trader fund and manual fund as a way to start diversifying your investments from the beginning. Nowadays, it's fairly common to be able to purchase fractional ETF share. So even if you do not have a lot of money to invest, you can gain exposure to the global stock and bond markets. Limit your risk. Investing is inherently risky. In the case of the stock market, you risk losing money when a particular company, a particular sector or the entire market goes down. Even so-called safe investment like cash and government bonds carry some risk. In that case, you face the risk that your investment will not keep peace with inflation, meaning your money is losing value. Likely, there are plenty of ways that you are an investor can reduce your portfolio risk. One of the most important tactics is, as we discussed previously, diversifying your portfolio. But it's also important to be cautious about what you add to your portfolio in the first place. During the past couple of years, cryptocurrency and day trading strategy have been in the public eye, leading investors to wonder if they should add them to their portfolio. Unfortunately, 
those types of investments can be highly speculative and more closely reversible gambling than long-term investing. That's not too easy. That's not to say you cannot include them in your portfolio, according to financial experts. If they have uh, the risk capacity and the risk tolerance, there's no reason they cannot consider those kinds of investments to be similar to any other gambling they might do with their money. Some people go to the track or bet on sports. There are many types of gambling, including investing, investing in cryptocurrency and other high-risk investments. If you choose to invest in some of those higher-risk investments, be sure your other financial duck are in a row. Pay off high in interest debt. Ensure you have fully founded emergency saving and contribute enough to a diversified retirement account to reach your retirement goals. Financially, only take on those risks with money you can afford to lose. Experts recommend that no more than 5% of your investment portfolio is in high-risk assets like crypto. If um, you investors do that, make sure it isn't money they need to living expenses or that would affect the time horizon for reaching their financial goals. And the last one, ignore volatility. <laughs> How to do this? As a new investor or even a seasonal, seasoned investor, it can be easy to check your accounts too often and panic when they seem to be heading in the wrong direction. For that reason, financial experts recommend avoiding checking your balances every day. According to Financist Clipper, once per month or per quarter is plenty for your 401 key plan. It's also important to release that if you are regularly contributing to your investment accounts such as your 401k, which every paycheck you can actually benefit from market volatility, as you buy more shares when the share price is low versus when it's high. But don't only invest when the market is low. Keep investing because time, time is the market, is more important than anything. It's easy to feel overwhelming by the volatility in the stock market and it leads many investors to make emotional decisions. But remember that the stock market has bounced back from every correction and downturn so far and done on to reach new record highs. There is no reason to think that will not be the case in the future. Remember the old adage, it's uh, the amount of time you are in the market, not timing the market. That's the important ingredient for achieving your financial goals. If you like this video, put like, notification bell, subscribe. And see you next video. Bye.